Okay, now our form looks like this. Let's add a checkbox to our form. And let's copy, copy this label. And a checkbox just tells you for a, for a certain value if it's true or false. It doesn't work like an option button. So let's, let's see that. Um, we'll put, I'll just put, did you, I'll put, uh, what should I put, employed. I'll put employed here as a question. And I'll put a checkbox next to it. So here, I'll go into the controls, and there's a checkbox icon. And here's my checkbox. Actually, I don't think I need this label because the checkbox has a label. I'll just change the size of this uh, font here. And I'll name this checkbox uh, CHK underscore employed. And the font, I want to make the font bigger. Make it 12 bold. So I changed uh, I changed the caption here. I changed the name of it here to CHK Employee, and I changed the font down here. Um, so checkboxes they're sort of like option buttons, but they don't work the same. Uh, they have if I go into the checkbox in the properties, they have a group name like we saw with option buttons. But it doesn't work automatically. So if you put multiple checkboxes here with the same group name, it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to select only one with that group name. This is a property that you can set. And if you program, there's other ways to sort of check the group name on all the text boxes. But we're not going to talk about that. All you need to know now is that option buttons and text boxes don't work exactly the same. The option buttons, as we saw, they have that group name. You know, if I click on an option button, they have this group name where if other option buttons have the same group name, you can only sec select one within the group. Text boxes don't work that way. They just have a checkbox, and the, if it's checked, the value is considered true. If it's false, the value is considered false. So these are very straightforward. And I will move that over here. And let me move the button down here. Move this button down too. And so our checkbox, all we need to do when we, when, we, um, when we hit this button is to do this, uh, you know, cells xrow 5 dot value equals to chk underscore employed dot value. This is going to return true or false. So if I go to my worksheet, I should have, you know, in column five, one, two, three, four, five, I'll put employed. And if I run this, if I put in a name, George, and I'll put great, and I'll, I won't check the employee checkbox, I'll just hit it. Look what happened if I close this. I have false in this column for employed for George. And that's because what I assign to that, if I double click the button, is the value of checkbox of the checkbox. And because it was blank, the value is considered false. If I check it, the value is going to be considered true. It's very straightforward. So all a checkbox is is like a true or false a true or false on something. So if I go up here, I'll just put some dummy data. No, I won't put dummy out. 
I'll make it look realistic. Mary, good. And I'll check it this time. And now if I do that, click close, um, back on my worksheet, it says true here. So checkboxes are very straightforward. If it's checked, the value is going to be true. If it's false, the value is going to be, if it's, if, sorry, if it's checked, the value is going to be true. If it's not checked, the value is going to be false. Okay. And you could put multiple checkboxes on here, but just remember the group name doesn't apply. It doesn't apply like the option buttons. You can write some code to programmatically make it work like the option buttons. But we're not going to cover that now. That's more advanced and it's not used too much. Um, if you want to get that functionality of like having a group of things and only selecting one thing, then just use opt option buttons. It's very straightforward. Just use op option buttons. Okay, so in the next video, we will take a look at <coughs> the, the spin button here. All right, let's move on.